Hi everyone, welcome back. And now this is the new ASRock B660 MPG Riptide that I have been so looking forward. It arrived in my lab last week and I had great time with it. Now, this is a very new board. It's not even in Malaysia yet, but it's on the way. It might be on the way to your country as well. So you have to check with your res uh, this uh, respective contacts. Now, this board, the pricing is just about RM50-ish above the B660 M Pro RS that I reviewed before. However, it has so many upgrades compared to that model. The PG Riptide here has 15 power phase over the 8 power phase that the B660 M Pro RS has. The PG Riptide here has a much larger heatsink. It has two M.2 slots being PCIe Gen 4x4. It has more USB ports. It has pre-installed IO shield and it has higher speed LAN port. So all this goodness for just about RM50 extra, I'd say that's actually worth it. There's one more feature on the PG Riptide, of which I call it the bonus feature, is that it is able to overclock non-K Intel CPUs. Now to end the video here, just after I've introduced all the features will be pointless. After all, you watched it until here already. So I am going to share with you my experience using this board when it comes to overclocking the non-K CPUs. After all, I'm an enthusiast and it has overclocking features, so why not? And if you like this kind of content, please remember to like this video and subscribe if you haven't. So let's move on. So I do not have my i9 with me anymore. So we'll leave that story for some other time, but I have an i3 and that's the CPU that I use to test this. Now. If you've been looking at the benchmarks around, you know that the i3 12100F can do 5.1 gigahertz. However, that's with an AIO. I decided to not use an AIO because I feel like it's not something, it's not something I would recommend people to have that you have an i3 and you buy an AIO that's of same value or higher than the processor. It just doesn't make sense. If you want a more powerful processor, just go and get yourself an i5 or whatever is that is higher. So with that, I'm sticking to stock cooler because that's realistic. If you have an i3 stock cooler and this bonus feature will get you some performance without you incurring additional costs on the cooler. Of course, some of you may already have a tower cooler. That's great. Keep it at that. Need not, you need not go for some, like what I say, a more pricey AIO just to get that performance boost. There is performance boost. However, like I said, there's, how do you say, if you want, really want more performance, you should just get a better CPU. Now, let's dive into the details. Now, with the tuning of the BCLK and using the stock cooler, I got mine to hit 4.8 GHz stable and when paired with the 6900 XT at 1080p with maximum graphics settings on games, I saw performance uplift. However, this pairing and game setting is unrealistic. After all, if you have a 6900 XT, you wouldn't be pairing it with an i3 and play at 1080p. I'm sure you'll be having a much more elaborate, much more powerful setup, right? So let's move on to something more realistic. So I tested it also with the HRX 5700 XT, which I think is a good representation of what the RTX 3060 series cards and the RX 6000 series cards can do and running at 1080p medium settings for high FPS gaming. You can see that some games see performance uplift while others show little to no change. As for productivity workload, I used Blender benchmark and saw quite good performance gains. Surprisingly, the stock cooler managed to cool the Core i3-12100F even under overclock just fine. The temperature is on the high 80s, however, this is within the operational limits of a Core i3 processor. As for the overclock settings, it will vary from processor to processor. However, these are the screenshots of mine, of which I think are the settings that you should pay attention to. They are the BCLK, the voltage, and the memory settings, of which I recommend loading the XMP first, and after that, setting it closest to the rated DDR speed of your memory, and then tweak it around, who knows, you can get it a bit higher. As for the VRM for this B660 MPG Riptide, Personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be afraid of using i7s and i9s with it. If you see my Z690 uh, PG Riptide review and even my B660M Pro RS review. Now the Pro RS, it has a smaller heatsink. I used an i9 and it worked. And 
For the PG Riptide, the Z690 model, I use an i9 on it as well. It worked fine and this casing looks like it's just as big as the one on the Z690. And even on the i3 when I overclocked with no fans on it, I saw the I did measure the temperature, it's about 50 degrees Celsius in my 30-ish degrees Celsius ambient environment. So yeah, I personally have confidence in the VRM and the cooling to handle i7 and i9 processors. And so in conclusion, with what I've presented to you so far, and given the price of this product, I can say that this is a good product, I absolutely love it and I hope you love it too. That's all from me for this one. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the video useful and informative. If you like more of this kind of content, do check out the videos at the side and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.